This is the final episode of a three-part series. The goal is to see how fast I can get a fire cape on a brand new Ultimate Iron Man, starting from nothing. And since this kind of a run hasn't ever been done before, whatever time I get here will be a benchmark world record for future runs. It'll determine the competition. It'll be the time anyone else planning this run has to beat. In the last episode, we finished up our entire prep. We used 10 grubby keys on the chest, and this is the setup we have going into the fight cave. This is definitely the worst gear and stats I've done the fire cape with, so it'll be interesting to see how this goes. And especially with only four prayer pots, I'm gonna have to be very diligent about conserving my prayer whenever I can. A death in the fight cave at this point would cost multiple hours on the run, so it's time to focus. We're currently 24 hours and 13 minutes deep. Since I'm going in with less than 49 HP, a single missed flick on those majors could end the run. Let's see what time we end up with, or if we miserably fail. Well, I was gonna log out, but then I remembered that uh, I do want two more ranging pots. I th well, one more ranging pot, I guess, two, two doses that I have on the ground here. I think it's just worth it because the DPS increase that I get will save me prayer, if anything, and, and will probably save me food even if I need the DPS. So I think two ranging pots is definitely the way to go. I don't think there's... I'm trying to make sure I don't leave anything here that I absolutely need because it would be really tough to get back here. But no, I think I am good to go. Uh, I just need to get my shield now. So yeah, this is my shield for the fight cave. I literally have nothing better. I was hoping to get a shield on my way somewhere in the run. I was hoping maybe I'd get a rune kite shield from uh, lava dragons or something, but it just never happened and uh after looking into it there is not a single shield shop in the game that has something better than like a steel square shield and this is better than a steel square shield so but yeah the setup is ready which means all i have to do is make sure i go in on the correct rotation it's a beautiful day isn't it let's see what george is up to ah yes here he is george is training some magic this fine afternoon but he's also training his mind by listening to audible who knows the endless possibilities of what George could be listening to. Perhaps he's listening to an Audible original or a podcast. We'll never know what he's enjoying in those headphones. You too can be like George. You can make your gains in the game and listen to something relaxing, inspiring, or educational on Audible. Like this book I recently listened to called Think Again by Adam Grant. He's an organizational psychologist teaching you a new way to think, to adapt, to take risks, becoming okay with not knowing or being wrong, it's an enjoyable and educational listen, and if you don't like audiobooks, Audible has a massive library of podcasts, guided wellness programs, and Audible originals that you can't find anywhere else. I've been a listener for years now, and I absolutely don't regret it. And Audible has something for you, I can promise you that. You can visit audible.com settled or text settled to 500 to start your free 30-day trial. If you didn't already know, there are only 15 possible rotations in the fight caves, and they pretty much rotate on the clock. So if you go in at a certain time, there will be a set rotation for what time you entered. Thankfully, someone made a spreadsheet that tells you what time correlates to what rotation, so all I have to do is enter the cave at the correct time, and I'll have that specific fight cave rotation. So once I know what rotation I'm on, I can piece together the spawn of every single monster on every wave, and that makes the fight cave tremendously easier when you're working with this kind of gear and inventory. Okay, it is 352, which means this should be rotation number 13. Should be a southwest spawn for this bat. And if it is... Yep, all right, there we go. We have rotation 13, so probably the best rotation for low level fight caves. I honestly don't know because I got two different replies from two different people. Uh, it's either rotation two or rotation 13, and I hope this is it, but at the same time, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. I'm just hoping that wave 60 is pretty good because I think that's the only one that really makes the difference, but we'll see. Got one day, 36 minutes on the clock, and there has been a tiny bit of a time skip because I went in a little early and didn't get the rotation I wanted to the first time, so uh, that's why we're a little delayed, but. And we've got our first ranger of the fight caves. Missing a flick on these isn't too bad. I believe the max hit is 13, but still don't want to do it. So, first melee, uh, I've taken some damage, nothing big, but, uh, and I've drained, what, pray eight prayer points, which isn't too bad, I think that's all from bats, so 
what, half a prayer point per wave? That's not too bad just yet. I should also be flicking these. I just get distracted by my own commentary, but there's really only one thing I'm worried about right now. I had like a few lag spikes towards the start of the waves, and if I lag spike on a major, oh my god. If I die from a lag spike on a major, I will never live it down. Ever. Ever. And here's the most dreadful part of the entire run, because I have to kill, what, 33 of these? Out of curiosity, I'm gonna put up a stopwatch and just show you guys how long a single one of these major kills is going to be. I'm uh, really curious how long this is going to take. Bone crossbow is not very accurate on this thing. Oh my god, that took forever and I'm <laughs> we're straight back into it. Let's go. <laughs> that was like five minutes or something. That might have been more than five minutes, honestly. Jeez. Yeah, we're going to have to do that a lot. <gasps> okay. Okay, buddy. That is stressful. Killing the major of 37 right now, and I've used, what, uh, one dose of prayer pot so far? So I'm starting to think that four was actually too much, uh, which is surprising. Uh, I probably could have done this with two, so... That's part of what this run was about, right? It's also figuring out the limits and figuring out how much I can go into this stuff with finding out what I'm capable of. So the major and ranger waves have started. This is probably where I'm going to start taking at least a little bit of damage, but I think I can solve pretty much every single wave to really minimize how much damage I take throughout this. I have a ton of food, though. I'm really not worried. These bats are making my life hell, dude. They're they're actually so annoying. Oh shit, please no. No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, it's so stressful, man. It's so stressful. That was a brutal hit. And all oh, these bats, man, these bats, it's so miserable. <laughs> it's so miserable. <laughs> oh, at least I got lucky. I hit that one for a nine instantly. You're about to have an eight year fire cape and I couldn't be more proud. That's generous, man. I'm gonna show you guys a super easy way to same tick yourself with a major. You literally just stand near the vent and you walk toward the major and boom, we are same ticked. So this is pretty much just a surefire way that I don't scrub my flicks because I've been one tick flicking this entire cave and I've made a few mistakes, but if I same tick myself with every major, which is not difficult to do, um, I can just flick my prayer on every four ticks and it's so much harder to mess up this way. Much easier than one tick flicking the entire five minute major kill. So it's just so much easier to same tick and not have to worry about losing your rhythm for five minutes. It's also extremely easy to set this up without a lineup. You just want a prayer flick and shoot in the same tick and you'll be on time. So super easy to do. Literally just the, this one trick, like I can do it right here the same tick and i i just feel so much more confident this way i know i'm not gonna screw up the prayer flick if i were to do this again i think i could use probably one prayer potion and get through it with this strategy because if i don't screw up a single flick i will barely use any prayer why are why are you not dragged all the way over oh shit um this is not good um, I think I can... <gasps> what? I... I actually have no words. I actually have no words. I've been in that cave for like five hours and that's how I go out. 11.13, dude. That was the freest cave of my life. That was literally the last difficult wave. I just... Oh, I had so much prayer left. That was so easy if I had just gotten past that wave. Oh, that's unbelievable, man. Yeah, so that happened. My original plan on this wave went completely out the window when this melee Tokyo drifted around the ranger instead of getting stuck on him. Unfortunately, before I was able to set up my backup plan here, I got stacked out for an 11-13 through my tank gear. Both nearly max hits and an extremely unlucky stack. I checked the same wave 60 on rotation 2 instead of rotation 13, and it is laughably easy in comparison, this was a cruel lesson to learn, and it cost me a really solid benchmark time on my fire cape. Unfortunately, that's just the way this run is. Small mistakes lead to absolutely soul-crushing time wastes. This game is never gonna let me complete anything without dying or getting set back, will it? Can we go again? Had I made it past wave 60, this would have been a completion. Funny enough, Jad, in my opinion, is the easiest part of all of this. And assuming I did complete the run without dying, my time would have been just a little over 29 hours. 
but even though I died, there's still no record out there, and I knew that. I used barely any prayer pots getting to wave 60, and I made a ton of mistakes while I was still getting comfortable. I could do this with half the prayer pots, and I can still set a solid benchmark time for the run. It was time to salvage this as best I could, and set a world record either way. Just gonna try to get a couple keys, get one prayer pot, and some food, and go straight back in. I'm so confident that I can get it easily if I go back in. It, it took me like the first 30 waves to get comfortable again with the, with the fight cave and stuff, and I'm just so positive that I will nail it if I go back in. Surprisingly, it only took me an hour to get my supplies back and get prepared for another run. Ooh, I got prayer pots from that, so I've got, what, three and a half prayer pots going into this. It's actually more than enough, as I've found out. I ditched the tank gear, bought a coif, and this time, I was going in with full confidence and using rotation two instead. Let's do this, baby. No mistakes. I am not making a single mistake on this run. Mark my words. Oh my god. <sighs> <laughs> Already doing way better on food and uh, also a bit better on prayer as well. So oh, this is like the first time I've had to off tick anything. Everything else has been handled pretty much perfectly. It's just the first time I had to do that. Boom, a very simple and easy wave 60 as it should have been the first time. Should be smooth sailing from here. So now I know for the future rotation two is the way to go. I just sipped a prayer pot. So I guess what I used one and a half prayer pots to get here, which like, that is not hard to get for future runs. I could probably do this entire cape with one full prayer pot, which is insanely good. I, I can definitely find a way to get one prayer pot really quickly and just smash this time. But we'll talk about that after Jed. And since I have so much prayer left, I'm just going to burn it all in Jed because I really have no other use for it. I might as well just not even flick because I have two full prayer pots left. So we're just chilling. Yeah, this fight's lasting a little longer than I thought. <laughs> I have three prayer points left and absolutely no prayer pots, so I'm just gonna start one tick flicking. I kind of went overboard. I just let my prayer burn uh, until I was down to this, thinking the fight would have been over like five minutes ago, but <laughs> it's been going on for a while, so. Oh, please tell me that's it. Yes! Done and done. Oh, that makes me so happy, dude. That makes me so happy. Let's go uh, very, very quickly check our final time. That was so much cleaner, so much easier. Very happy with that. One day, 10 hours, 23 minutes. So 34 hours and 23 minutes to get a fire cape from scratch. Brand new account. Obviously, we screwed up the first run, but um, I learned so much from this first benchmark run that I'm honestly pretty happy with that. Either way, this is a record now. 34 hours and 23 minutes is a record. Look, I know I can do so much better than that, but with a lot of mistakes, with a lot of lessons learned, we take that. It's honestly still a pretty damn cool achievement. 56 combat, and these were the stats that I ended up with at the end of things. Despite my extremely unfortunate failure, my first time in the caves, 34 hours and 23 minutes, that is how long it took me to get a fire cape on a brand new Ultimate Iron Man. Even though I didn't get a first try, this is now the world record for fastest UIM fire cape. I am a record holder. Why, why the record scratch? I, I am the world, I'm the record holder, right? I, I do hold this record, right? The answer is no, actually. During the production of this video, the record was lowered. And I'm not gonna lie, when I saw who was tweeting this new record at me, I knew I was about to be forced back to the drawing board. A challenger has approached the ultimate Iron Man fire cape speedrun, and to call him a worthy challenger would be an understatement. The challenger is Evan Abi, a very experienced RuneScape speedrunner, and by that I mean Evan Abi holds the record for every single category on the game. That is not an exaggeration. Every single one. He didn't beat my run by minutes, not by an hour, but by 15 hours in just 19 hours and 10 minutes. If I want to claim my very short-lived title once again, it's time to strap in for a war. Throughout the run and everything I've learned, I thought about how easy it would be to get the time down to under 24 hours with just a few adjustments and let alone what I could do if I re-optimized my route entirely. I was thinking around 22 hours would be 
an amazing improvement on my second attempt at this. And now, I'm forced to throw all of that out the window. It's time to start from scratch. I do want to address that for any following runs, I will not be abusing dailies as I agree with the sentiment in the comments that it is unfair. An example would be abusing the Falador shield to restore prayer by logging out and waiting for a cooldown every 24 hours. I think dailies like this where you can trade real life time for in-game time shouldn't be allowed in these kinds of runs and from now on, I will not be using any of those to construct my routes. And that includes the Mage Tutor cooldown for more runes and Lumbridge. And that's okay, I don't need any of that. Now that I know I can do this with less than two prayer pots, now that I have the confidence I need to prayer flick the entire cave without mistakes, I can really work on getting this time to its absolute bottom. I will beat the 19 hour fire cape. Mark my words.